Butler County at the undisclosed man cave of Herschel House. <laughs> Good talking with you today. You Good talking with you, Sam. I have heard about your stuff mm -hmm. from many people. You make some pretty interesting ah, guns. We We've heard a lot about you, too. It's not true. No. Unless it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. It was really good. But you know what? As we look around here, I see guns sitting in every corner. Now, how did you get inspired to, to do something like I this? I don't understand it, really. <laughs> uh, when I was in the fourth grade, they had a Kentucky reader that was, the name of it was Singing Wheels, and it was all about the pioneer young boy that went out to Kansas to be with his, his grandparents. And that book inspired a lot into me. I've still got a copy of it. No kidding. But ever since then, and then my grandfather was just a wealth of knowledge and information about early American history, the Civil War, and what have you. And I think he instilled a lot of, of my appreciation of that. What are you working on now? This is a big rifle that I'm building for one of our friends. It's kind of a Kentucky-style gun. In other words, it, it's got some features that were much like the rifles that were made here in the state. It's a, it's a 54 caliber, big bore where he's a deer hunter and uh, goes out west and hunts elk and all the big games. So we primarily enjoy building rifles for people that will use them and hunt with them. As I look at your gun, I'm seeing a lot of attention to detail. I mean, everything you do is, is you try to uh, go according to the style that they were made in. Is that the fellow's name that's going to be yeah, on the this, this is my name here, H House for Herschel House gotcha. and then Woodbury for Woodbury, Kentucky. Gotcha. We've kind of got a, a style going that they, they call the Woodbury School Art our friends and associates at gun shows. But there's a, a, a real good craving for handmade stuff in this disposable society. And there's a lot of turn to these old rifles for hunting. We've got a lot of primitive hunting areas now and a primitive seasons. It's just amounted to a lot more than I'd ever dreamed. Why guns? Why, well, what brought you to the gun? I don't know. I always had a love for hunting. And uh, I found a gun in 1956. It was just a squirrel rifle. As a matter of fact, it looked very much like this little rifle here. But it was a little half stock squirrel rifle. Mm -hmm. And I fixed it up. And now, was it an original? Or? It was an original gun. It was built by probably a maker there in Woodbury. Hmm. And uh, I hunted and killed squirrels with it. Where'd you find that? I found it in an old barn. It was Miss Gibbs's old barn. Her. <laughs> her daddy it had been his rifle and I finally got up enough nerve to ask her what she'd take for it she gave it to me. So wow. This was in 1956 and so I've been in love with these old guns ever since. Now as we came in I saw a fella uh, he was melting something down and banging it out. Yeah this him. is my brother we forge out our gun mounts. Now we're building primarily iron mounted guns. These I have the, the mounts instead of being made of brass we're made of steel. Tim, what my brother John's doing here at this point is making the, the butt plate for the long rifle, the big early flat one. You can see how he's getting that 90 degree bend. Mm -hmm. And we form all of these parts. I actually cut out the patch box from just sheet steel, scrap steel we had here. And we also, John's real good at making these trigger guards. And we do our side plates and ramrod pipes and a lot of the parts we can, We've done, we've got friends though that make their living building these uh, gun barrels for right. a living. So we right. buy our barrels generally. Right. But what's created a stir about this handmade rifle, we welded the barrel up from a strap of metal and reamed and rifled it and everything. So it is literally, we made every screw, everything. <laughs> Now, something I found fascinating was the fact that uh, you all actually have made stuff for movies, and I guess people right. people want authenticity in some of the movies. You talked about Master and Commander, yeah, Patriot. That's exactly right, and, and I've noticed they're doing a lot better with firearms in all the movies. Apparently, people are better informed, right, or that that they care. So, uh, the guns that we built are very traditional, mm -hmm. and, and would have been probably what Daniel Boone and and Davy Crockett and those guys would have carried. Right. I'm gonna stand back and if you will explain the loading procedures. Uh -huh. It's a fairly simple procedure. You've got to have what we call the makings. And that, of course, is your main powder horn and your charger. You don't just pour powder down the barrel, you measure it out. Mm -hmm. This is the bullet pouch. You've carried your, your wadding. This is your patching or wadding. And then, of course, in the little pouch, we carry the big 60 caliber ball. We'll fill up our charger. This is the regular old black powder. I'm gonna dump a couple of those in there. So this will be about 70 grains, which 
ought to be about right. It's still a fairly light, light charge for this big bore gun. And I reach and grab my, my patching. There's my cleaning patching too. Get out a bullet. Now I'm just spitting on this patch. That adds lubricant to the to the uh, to the load. It might it slip down better and keep breaking up the fouling after you've shot a few rounds. This is a flintlock, so I pull the cock back to a half cock, and it's not safe. You heard it click in there, and then I'll fill what they call a flash pan full of fine powder. Pull it back to full cock. Thank you so much for kind of showing yeah, us right uh, again. And we could spend about six weeks down here, but well, yes. <laughs> we sure enjoyed having you come well, by. We appreciate, we appreciate it. it.